Hello, hello. I am so running late. So don't mind me. Um, my space is just a mess. All right, so today we are going to do, um, hello. We are gonna do some bullion knots and a woven wagon wheel. So let's do it. We're only gonna do like two or three bullion knots. I think I'm only gonna do two. I do not like bullion knots. I don't. I'm gonna throw that out there right now. They are like my least favorite stitch in the entire world. Um, so I'm gonna do a woven wagon wheel kind of in the middle of both of these and then we'll do French knots around it. So as circular as you can, not too big if you're running out of thread because we need to use six strands. So just be cautious if you are feeling worried about how much thread you have left. Make sure I don't have anything back here. Okay, let's do the woven wagon wheel first, which I know is not everyone's favorite. I don't mind them. They're not my favorite stitch, but I think that they're fun. And I think they're especially fun for beginners because they look a lot more um, difficult than they actually are. So... They, I think that they're really super fun for beginners. All right. So we are going to use all six strands and get ready for it. I'm just tying a little knot here. Okay. So with woven wagon wheels, we want to, we need to have an odd number of spokes to weave around. So with this small, you could go three or five. I'm gonna go three. So I'm kinda just gonna go ahead and make a peace sign. You want these spaces to be as even apart as possible. That will keep your, um, that will keep things looking even. All right, so what we're gonna do is first, we're going to stitch, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Um, stitch these uh, spokes and then we will weave around them. So just from the edge of your circle, just like three straight stitches. So these stitches should all be as close to the same length as possible as well, okay? So we have our three spokes and then we're going to do some weaving. So we're going to come up um, just next to any of those. I'm just going to come up right there. Friends, I cannot see. Okay, there we go. I can't see what you can see. All right, so you can go either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter as long as you continue to go the same way. So whichever way you think is gonna be easier, I'm right-handed, so I tend to go clockwise, but it's not gonna be a big deal. So we're gonna go just like we've been doing when we leave, over one, under the next. So we went under here, so we're gonna go over this one and under this next one. With three, it feels like a little crazy. With five, there's like more to weave around. So it like we're just going like under every other one this time um all right so i like to kind of leave this center a little bit looser i mean i like to leave all my stitches a little bit looser when i'm doing a wagon wheel but um you want it to be like so it comes into the center and like covers that spoke but don't get too crazy if you pull it really tight, then it takes a ton of thread and it's not as like fluffy. Okay, now we're weaving and we've got all these stitches around. I usually do my woven wagon wheels first, um, but obviously we have our edge. So um, pushing up from the back when we're putting our needle under can help. Um, working really slow, 
holding on to this pointy part. You can also go through with the eye of your needle instead if you want. Okay, so we're gonna go under that one. So we're gonna go over this one and under this one again. And we're just gonna do that until our spokes are all covered. I tend to, in these first ones, I kind of fix these a little bit so that they sit where I want them to. And then at the end, I don't do that quite as much. So, okay, under, over, under. And then I usually have my hoop in my hands, so I don't have to use my left hand when I am like stitching in my hands, but, um, and then I just turn my hoop as I weave. But here we are doing it this way. I think that smo sp blah, 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 small woven wagon wheels are fun because they don't take very long. They don't use quite as much thread and look how adorable they are. So if you have done woven wagon wheels and you don't love them, I still want you to try them. Try a small one. Okay, now once we start to get where you can't see the spokes as much but you know it's there, make sure when you go under that you're not snagging the threads around it because if you pull any of these threads, like if you grab just one, it's gonna mess up your entire rows. So working slowly, if you have a blunt needle, that's a good option as well. Um, but I have found as long as I'm working slowly, I don't have any problems. And we're just gonna go until those spokes are all covered on every side. Now, while you're weaving, sometimes your thread will start to like twist up, which is super annoying because it doesn't let your rows be quite as fluffy. So make sure if your thread is getting all twisted that you let it like hang and untwist. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it done so when I finish so I went under this one so I'm gonna go over this one and just go down I'm gonna like move these threads out of the way and go down at an angle so it still kind of looks like the edge of that rose Okay, and then one thing I like to do is kind of fluff these up. Now, same thing, if you grab just one thread, you're gonna pull the whole thing out of whack. So if you're gonna do this, do it slowly, do it gently, don't get too crazy. But you can kind of like, like this one's kind of poking out really far, so I can kind of pull the ones around it so that they are out a little bit further as well and kind of balance that a little bit. But look at that variegation. Ah, it's so cute. So another thing you can do if you have like one spoke that's giving you trouble, like it's just so long, um, you could also just go around the edge and do a stem stitch. Um, so just like come up at an angle, like from underneath, and then when you go down, go down at an angle like this. Whoop, whoop, whoop and then come up at an angle. So then you're like right on the edge of your rows, but, um, hold on. So then you're like right on the edge of your rows, um, and you can kind of finish that off. I have other videos, if you're wanting to do that, um, maybe message me and I will find you a video that I've done it in. I'm not going to do it this time because I don't want to mess up this rose that I really love. So, um, anyways, that is also an option. Another option with woven wagon wheels is, let me just flip this over. Um, so I can draw on here. So if you draw a circle, 
you can draw another circle in the middle and just do your spokes like that so that you kind of leave that center open. And then you can do like French knots in there or some satin stitch and then do the woven wagon wheel around it. I've also done videos where I've done that. So if you're interested in doing something different, there's other videos available that show that. Um, so if you want to do something like that, you totally can. Um, if you're doing big woven wagon wheels, you could do 12 stranded. So just like doubling your thread over and then tying them together. So you have 12 strands is really fun. Makes them like big, giant, fluffy things. <laughs> so that's really fun. I am so zoomed in. Um, but Woven wagon wheels are super fun to like play around with size and texture and just a different look. So pretty and easy. Got a lot of bang for your buck with the woven wagon wheels. Agreed. That's why I think, especially if you're a beginner, like they can be so fun. And especially if you can like figure out how you like to do them. I usually do a center. I usually leave the center open and do some French knots in there. I mean, sometimes it's nice to just have them simple like this. But um, they can be really fun to just like mess around with and do different things. So there is that. And we will do some French knots around it tomorrow. Okay. Are we ready for bullion knots? I'm not sure I am. <laughs> they really are just my least favorite stitch in all the world. So here we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up on this end. We're gonna go down on this end. And we're gonna leave some thread out, okay? We're gonna come back up in this same hole, okay? Now, you can leave your needle in like this or you can pull it out. I think it's easier to leave it in the fabric and then kind of hold on to it from the back. So like hold it still. So let me show you on the back. My finger is just like holding this needle down so that it will like stick up like that. Because what we're gonna do is wrap this around this. It uses a lot of maneuvering so my middle finger is holding the needle in the back and then my pointer finger is helping hold these stitches in place the hard thing is finding the right tension if you twist these too tightly then they're really it's really hard to pull your needle through so you don't want them to be too tight but if you do them too loose then they it won't look good so you kind of have to guess like how many times you need to wrap it so that it fits this space because we're trying to fill this spot right here with this bullion knot. So kind of bring it, I usually like bring it down and I'm like, okay, that's good. So once that's on there, you can move these knots down to the bottom and pull your needle out. So you're still holding on, and I did mine too tight. So I'm holding on to those and pulling my thread through at the same time. Bullion knots, I'm too cat-handed for bullion knots, I just can't get them. They are really hard to get right. I know some people just love them and they do them all the time and they look so good. And I just, I cannot. So, and then just keep pulling until your thread is all the way through. I've pulled my knot to the front, you can see it there. Okay, hold on, let me get that knot out of the way because it's ruining the look. Hold on. Okay, so there we've got our bullion knot on there. 
And then we're gonna go back down in that same hole to finish it. I always wait until I have this knot on here before I go back down. Because once you're down, you're kind of out of luck. So, friends, that's like the best looking bullion knot I've ever made. <laughs> they are rough. Okay, we're going to do another one. Okay, so we're going to go up and we're going to go down. We're going to leave some thread and we're going to come back up. All right. Let me change hands here because I want to be able to hold this like I was. All right, so we are going to wrap this around a whole bunch of times and slide those down. Let's see, maybe just once more. Okay, whoop, keep those there. I got all cut up and I got distracted. Now I'm late to the party. We're just doing bullion knots. I've not done one since the butterfly body we did in the garden stitch along. <laughs> I haven't either. <laughs> that was my last one. Oh my gosh. I really don't love them, but I know some people do. So if you don't want to do these, then don't, don't do them. I mean, it might be fun to try it, but if you hate them, then take them back out. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide these. And these are easier if you have a needle um, that doesn't have a very big eye. I don't think that the DMC 599, but size five needles are too big, but anyways. So pull that all the way down. They are possible, they're just like, I just don't think that they are worth the trouble, personally. Okay, so we're going to go back down. <sighs> Look! Let's see. I've not done one since the butterfly body we did in the garden stitch long. Oh, look, both of you. <laughs> and it was my idea. It was Lisa's idea, you guys. Never done one. I'm just observing right now to try to learn it. Jesse loves them. Oh my gosh. Milner needles. Yes, that's what they're called. Milliner needles. Good to know. So I will choose a thinner needle. Yeah, because then it's just not quite as hard. Okay, you guys, I'll do another. I'm not hating them as much as usual today. They are just, they're just a lot. So we did do them in the garden. Let's see, the rainbow garden. And we did like little caterpillars. So they were like super cute. And we did, I'll do one this time. We made it so that they would like stand up. We put too many, um, we went around it too many times and it kind of bunched up like a, like a little caterpillar. They were cute. Okay, so we're gonna leave our loop. We're gonna come back up here. Oops, okay, well, I pulled my needle out. So we're just gonna do it like this. So if this looks easier, do it this way. Pull your thread out and then wrap it. Okay, now I want this to be longer than my stitch so that then it'll like poke up like a little caterpillar inching along. Okay, I think that was way too tight. They do look lovely, they're just kind of a pain. Okay, so now see I have all this like craziness going on. Get my needle out of there. Oh, see? These ones down here are too loose. Let's see if I can get them a little tighter. Now I've got a bunch of loose, weird things going on. That's why I don't like them. I feel like they're really finicky. This is usually this is usually how mine go. I'm like, oh great, look, I've got this really funky spot right here. That's why I like to keep my needle in it instead of pulling it out. We're just gonna, ooh, 
Okay, so if I just go ahead and like twist these, that kind of helped. So like I know like Kate, um, her account is two little kits. She does like flowers with them, like does them long like this so that they'll like arch. And then she like makes flowers out of them and they are so cool. I just, my fingers don't work that way. Okay, so there we go. So now you can see it like sticks up right here, like a little bump. So we kind of did that with our little caterpillars. They were cute. They just, they're, <laughs> they're just not my favorite. Okay, there we go, friends. I did three. I did three. And they don't look terrible. This one is not great, but I think it could definitely be worse. So I'm going to call that a day and be really excited about it. Um, anyways, they're cute. Especially like this one and this one turned out really good. This one is, it struggled. But anyways, let me see. Let me know if you decide if you like them. I know people that do. So it's not like, it's not like you'd be alone. You're just really awesome if your fingers can do that. All right. Okay, so tomorrow we will finish our edging, but let's do our greenery here. And then um, tomorrow we will do French knots. And do you guys want to learn colonial knots as well or just French knots? I think I'll do a poll in my stories because it's kind of the same thing. Some people love French knots and other people don't. And if you don't love French knots, usually you like colonial knots. So. Um, so we can learn both because I like both. I just, I normally do French knots because I'm faster at them. Both. Okay. I can do both. All right. What do we want to do for a stitch on this? Do we want to do, I was going to say a whipped back stitch, but we did a whipped back stitch here. So do we want to do it here as well? Maybe we should stitch it and then whip it with a different color. Well, not a different color, but let's separate our threads and we will do, um, we'll whip it with like the opposite end. Yes, both. Bullion knots for it. Both to know. <laughs> We are not doing this in bullion knots. Absolutely not. I will not be doing that. <laughs> okay. I am going to do a whipped back stitch, but I'm going to do it with different colors. So yeah, I'm going to do three threads. So I'm going to back stitch with three threads and then I'm going to whip it with three threads. So it'll look similar. I think this was four. I think we did four on it. I'd have to go back and look, but that's what's coming to my mind. Which you could also do. You could totally do four. Or you could do six. Go for it if you want to do six. I just have to lift this up a little. Okay. So we're just going to back stitch first, and then we'll go back and whip the whole thing. So remember backstitch. Oh, I should show you my trick with backstitch. I haven't done that yet. So when I backstitch, I go back one stitch and then I go forward for the next stitch. So instead of like always moving backwards, I go backwards and then forwards and then backwards and then forwards. So there's our forward stitch and then I do a backstitch. It saves a little bit of thread to do it this way. You just have to remember which way you went last or else you'll start undoing your threads as you work. So forward a stitch and then backwards a stitch.
I can't believe we are almost done. So tomorrow's will be a little bit later. Um, I watch my friend's kids on Friday. I have so many kids at my house, you guys. Tuesday, Thursday, I have a baby at my house. And then Fridays, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. I'm like the random drop-off place for all my friends that work outside the home. <laughs> I'm like their random daycare lady. And if you were around for other stitch alongs, it's not the same kid that I was watching last spring. It's a different one. So that always makes things kind of interesting. Okay, there's that. Go in that same hole. And the last one. Oops. I just started last night after finishing the terrarium stitch long. I have much to catch up on. <laughs> Yay! The terrarium was so fun. But yes, this one... Most of the days are fairly short, so... There was only one that was like... I think it was like 55 minutes or something. But the rest are like 20 or 30 minute days. Alright. So... What I'm going to do is tie this off and then I will show you what I'm going to do. Oh, hold on. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this tail to become my end. So I'm just going to pull it all the way down to the bottom and tie the knot there. So then I'm like stitching from the other end of my thread. So when I um, whip it, it'll have some different colors on there. Okay. So I'm going to come up here where I ended and then just go back and whip it. So I usually like to whip mine out from the, like if there's like a circular space, I usually whip mine out, but you can go either way as long as you stick with whatever way you choose. And just be careful you're not snagging anything around it. Working with my left hand is way harder. I don't know if this is too subtle for you to see on the camera, but I can see like the two different colors of green. Okay, I'm gonna go down here. And then when I do this one, I'll be able to whip it all the way down. So I'm gonna come over to this one and whip this one next so I can end here and then just come over here and whip this next one. I just wanna talk to you about my reasoning why I'm doing things the way that I am. You kinda have to think ahead a little bit with embroidery like, is that gonna work and is that the right? order to do things. 
I mean, there's not like a wrong order, but there's sometimes like more convenient ways to do things. All right, so I'm gonna go down there. And I'm gonna come up over here and do the same and just whip that. Whipped back stitch is in the top favorites. I love whipped back stitch. Okay, that's another thing you can do. Like I'm holding these stitches down and like getting my needle out of the way so it won't snag those. You kind of just have to find like what works for you when you're like weaving around thing like stitches that are already in place because you don't want to lose a bunch of stitches just because like that you can't use just because you've got other things around it so you kind of just have to figure out ways to make the stitches work for where they are in the pattern Normally I would turn my hoop so that I can use the hand that I want to use, but I can't do that with a hoop stand. And you guys don't want to watch a video of me holding a hoop in my hand. You would be motion sick. Okay. Alrighty. That green is done. Our pumpkins are so cute. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do extra swirls in here, you can. Do one over here. Do one come like do one like coming out right here. Do another one coming out right here. Like feel free to fill this space however you want. I the pattern is your guide, but it's not the only way to do things. So if you want to add more in here to fill this space, please go for it. Like it is not going to hurt my feelings. Um, same with like over here. Like once we learn French knots, if you want to like add French knots in here or something, go for it. If you want to add extra things down here, go for it. Like this is yours. So do with it what you want. Um, so tomorrow is our last day. We're going to do French knots. We'll do colonial knots. Oh, and pistol stitches. I forgot. We were going to do that too. Okay, so we've got three things to learn tomorrow. Um, and then we'll be done. So let me know if you have questions. Let me know <laughs> how your bullion knots go. I'm very curious to see who tries them and who gives up. <laughs> I hope nobody gives up. I hope you'll all try them. But anyways... Have a good afternoon and I will see you back tomorrow. We will be an hour later tomorrow at 1.30 instead of 12.30. Um, so anyways, I will remind you in my stories, but I will see you tomorrow. Bye.